Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be showing how you can leverage Microsoft's Internet of Things to communicate with a Raspberry Pi. This example will consist of communication going from a Raspberry Pi up to the cloud, but a similar approach can be used to communicate from the cloud down to a Raspberry Pi. We'll be making use of the following technologies and services. Azure IoT, Azure Storage, Bash Scripting, GitHub Actions, Terraform, Docker, and of course, Python. As always, links to the source code can be found in the description. Let's begin with our Terraform. Terraform is an open source, infrastructure as code software tool that enables you to safely and predictably create, change, and improve our cloud infrastructure. We're using Terraform here so that we can easily deploy our IoT Hub and storage account in the Azure portal. One thing to note is that I'm using GitHub Actions to do this. So if you're cloning the repository, you'll want to remove any Git references of my own and replace them with yours. Be sure to create the equivalent GitHub environment and secrets associated with these actions. The main.tf file is where our resources are being defined. You'll see here that we're defining a storage container for our storage account and an IoT hub. Our IoT hub defines an endpoint and a route. These will be important later when we are sending data from the Raspberry Pi to the IoT hub and from the IoT hub to a storage account. Let's navigate to our GitHub Actions and run the workflow to deploy our Terraform infrastructure. The first part of this GitHub action will generate a Terraform plan. The second part will then use the Terraform plan to apply it and deploy our resources to the Azure portal. Once the workflow is complete, we can navigate to the Azure portal and validate that our resources were created. In the IoT Hub, if you navigate to the routing, you'll notice that we have our route and our endpoint that were defined earlier in our Terraform code. With that taken care of, we can move on to configuring and setting up our Raspberry Pi. Navigate to the config section and follow the prerequisite instructions for the base setup of your Pi. The first step, following the prereqs, is to create an edge device. We'll use the GitHub action to do so. All that's required in terms of input is an ID for the desired device. Once complete, you can navigate to your IoT Hub and into the IoT Edge devices. There you'll see the device that you've just created through the GitHub action. In order to establish a connection between the Edge device in Azure and our Raspberry Pi, we'll need to run some installation scripts on the Pi. This will install the Azure IoT Edge runtime and establish our connection. From your local machine, navigate into the config directory and run the script to generate the installation scripts using the device ID and the connection string found through the Azure portal. Now run the second script to copy and unpack the previously generated script onto our Raspberry Pi. Be sure to use your Raspberry Pi's IP address and the username that you should have created in the prerequisites section. You'll be prompted for the password several times during this process. Finally, we can SSH into our Raspberry Pi, navigate into our setup directory, and kick off the installation script. This process will take a few minutes to complete. Now that it's been completed, we can move on to the steps to confirm the installation and status of our Edge device. Here I'm running a few commands that will tell us the system status, check our connection, and list any modules running. We'll want to verify that our Edge agent and Edge hub module are running before we go back and verify in the Azure portal. Back in Azure, if we refresh our device details page, we should now see that we have a 200 OK status and that both modules are connected. Additionally, if you click the Troubleshoot tab, you should start to see live logs coming from our Raspberry Pi device. Moving on to our Edge modules. An IoT Edge module is a containerized piece of code that is installed on our device and performs some type of logic. Before we run our workflow to build and push the module to our Raspberry Pi, let's understand what it is that our code is doing. In the main.py file, you'll find the boilerplate code that is connecting to our Edge environment and running a command on loop until the module is shut down. The command being run is found in the utils.py file. The logic here generates a random temperature to simulate our Raspberry Pi checking its own CPU temp. If this temperature is above a certain threshold, the module will send a message up to our IoT hub 
so that an end user can be properly notified. Let's kick off the action to build and push our containerized module to our Docker Hub account. From there, the Edge device will be updated to pull in this image and run it as a module. One thing to note is that I created this GitHub action to run based on a GitHub release. This ensures that our code is managed in a more consistent manner. Feel free to modify this or to simply run the commands from your local machine if it's easier for you to do so. After the module is pushed to Docker Hub, we can quickly verify that our tagged version now exists before proceeding to update the Edge device. With our deployment complete, we can see our new sensor filter module running on the Raspberry Pi. You'll notice in the logs of this module that the temperature threshold is not being crossed, so no messages are being sent to the IoT Hub. Let's quickly fix that and deploy a new version just as we would in a real environment. In our utils.py file, we can see that the random library generator isn't actually generating a random integer. Let's change this to use the randint function and have it select between 0 and 10. Once that's been updated, I'll update the related version in our code and publish a new release on GitHub. Now when we check the module logs, we should see that the threshold is being crossed and a message is being sent to our IoT Hub. We'll confirm this in our IoT Hub homepage by checking the Device to Cloud Messages graph. Additionally, because we set up routes and endpoints for our IoT Hub, we should be able to see the actual messages being sent to our storage account. And just as we expected, we can see the related files in our storage account. There are many other endpoint integrations, such as using an event hub to trigger another action off of the device to cloud message. I hope that this video introduces you to the world of IoT and helps you to explore several of its capabilities. Be sure to clean up your Azure resources when finished so that you don't incur any costs. That's all I have for this video, and thanks for watching.